This short film will take you through the installation procedure for Aurora single phase string inverters, focusing on residential and small commercial applications. Choose a location sheltered from direct sunlight to other sources of heat. Choose a well ventilated place to allow good circulation of air around the unit. Avoid places where air cannot circulate freely. Choose a place with sufficient space to permit easy installation and removal of objects from the mounting surfaces. If more than one unit is installed, avoid placing one above the other to prevent overheating from heat given off by the one below. Drill the holes in line with the support brackets fixing holes. Secure inverter support brackets using the dowels and screws provided. Once you have hooked the inverter onto the bracket, secure the lower part using the slot in the inverter's lower flange. Unscrew the inverter's front panel with the wrench provided. Make sure the AC line is disconnected. Place the cable gland in the hole used for the AC cables and pass the cable through for connection to the AC mains and PE connection. Connect the cables respecting the position of the earth lead. Check the polarity of each pair of cables that must be connected to the inverter input. Crimp the counterparts to the string cables or the cables from the external string disconnecting switches, paying attention to the polarity of the voltage and the connector or terminal. Make sure the built-in disconnecting switch is off or the external disconnecting switches are open. Connect the previously crimped connectors to the input connectors on the lower part of the inverter, respecting the polarity. This example shows a single string array. Using the cables with insulated female festoons, connect the positive terminal of the input one to a positive terminal of input two. Repeat the connection for the negative terminals. Act on the dip switch identified by the input mode printing and put it on the PAR position. Power One's Aurora inverters feature an RS485 communication port. You can find out more about setting up the inverter connections within the product manual. Check the input voltage values and the input voltage polarity. Check the photovoltaic generator's insulation to earth. Check the grid voltage. Make sure the cable glands are mounted properly and also make sure that the gasket on the front panel has been correctly mounted. Screw the inverter's front panel back on with the wrench provided. Put the built-in disconnecting switch to the on position or close the external disconnecting switches. If the inverter indicates the missing grid status, close the AC switch downstream of the inverter to apply the grid voltage to the inverter. If the preliminary checks for parallel to the grid are successful, the inverter connects to the grid and begins to export power to it. At this stage, the display shows the inverter's parameters in cycles. The green LED stays lit, whereas the others are off. When there are several inverters wired on the same RS485 line, the RS485 port address must be different for each inverter. To modify the address, you have to access the address sub-menu. On first startup of the inverter, it is necessary to configure the date and time by accessing the time sub-menu. Should it be necessary, you can choose between the national language and English by accessing the language sub-menu. The startup voltage can be regulated by accessing the VStart submenu. In the case of independent channel configuration, it is possible to configure the VStart for channel 1 and channel 2 separately. Once your inverter has been installed, it is time to register it for warranty purposes. For more information, please visit www.power-1.com.